I think scientists have an obligation, although I admit there's a dilemma there now, to respond to creationists and the intelligent design people and not let them have the field. How many articles about intelligent design have been in the newspapers in the last few months? It's hard to pick one up or a magazine without reading about it. So I think scientists have to speak up and we have to speak up more forcefully and we have to be very blunt about it. Uh, we have to say that if creationism is right and if there is an intellectual and intelligent designer, then almost everything else we know about science is wrong. Then your flu vaccine wouldn't work. Your car wouldn't start. There was no Hiroshima uh, and on and on and on. If, if scientists are wrong about something as important as, cre as, the, as evolution and the age of the earth, then they must be wrong about a whole bunch of stuff and nothing would work. Our way of life couldn't possibly exist. You really can't have it both ways. There is sort of a built-in prejudice in the scientific community against people who are said to be popularizers. In other words, serious science means working in the lab, publishing papers, writing grants, speaking only to scientists, using big words, uh, appearing to be confusing and disinterested to the general public. Scientists have to be a whole lot more willing to explain what they do, to explain why what they do is fascinating and interesting and why it deserves public support. And a large part of the problem, as I've just alluded to, is the fact that we in the scientific community have a, a, a sort of personality cult that basically says that those who try to simplify and explain science to lay people are wasting their time, that they're doing unimportant and frivolous work. I think we have to appreciate in science that those who take the case for science to the general public are in fact doing almost the most important work of anyone in the scientific community because a vigorous and healthy scientific community is impossible in a democracy like ours without public support. So developing the public support for science in many ways is the most important job that anybody in the scientific community can take on. We have uh, had advice ignored by politicians. We have had uh, large numbers of Nobel laureates signing their names to a petition saying that uh, this is a very bad policy for this advice to be ignored. Uh, the only way for science then to be heard is to get up in front of cameras to say our piece. As American citizens, we are free to do that and to question the authority that is being imposed upon us by uh, political uh, activities. If scientists don't educate the public about science, it's difficult to say who will. But this is a difficult question. Science educators take relatively little science compared to scientists as curriculum. And a teacher will be the first person to admit that they don't know enough about science and wish they knew more to be in their classroom. I used to teach classroom science before I went back to graduate school. I mean, I know. I went back because I didn't know enough science I, to feel comfortable in a classroom. And I have always met people in teaching who have felt that way. They're wonderful people, and they admit it, and they want to learn more. Scientists can help, but you know, scientists have to learn how to speak to the public. It's not that easy. And scientists often can use language that's very sloppy, as we've seen, like, you know, talking about what a theory is when they haven't thought about it very much. You do have to think about this a lot before you do. Otherwise, you simply create more confusion. And it's also fodder for the anti scientists who say, see, you disagree about this. And when it's really like, oh no, that person just really didn't think very much about an answer before he gave it. I think it's really important to work with the public to explain science. But I don't think that it's quite simple enough to ask the public to pay attention when a respected scientist speaks, because that scientist may not know how to explain something to the public, and the public will come away confused. Rather, it should be when you have 
scientific bodies that are set up to form consensus, to report on consensus, to distill issues and present a nonpartisan picture to the public or to Congress or the President, then these people should be heeded unless there is a really good expert reason why they shouldn't be. Now scientists, of course, are just one part of the picture when you're making public decisions. Scientists may want to do something, but there may not be enough practicality in public funds to do it. Okay, we understand that. But institutes like, like the Institute of Medicine, the National Academy of Sciences, were set up as nonpartisan bodies to advise Congress and the President on issues related to natural science and medicine. Yes, they should be listened to. Of course they should be listened to. Apart from this, there's a question of what happens if scientists don't explain their discipline? I will give you two contrasting examples. I will give you NASA and the U.S. Geological Survey, which over the period of time from the 1960s to the present have seen very different histories. In the 60s, they were both fairly good, strong agencies. The U.S. Geological Survey was charged with essentially mapping, understanding the resources, the, the history of the earth, the tectonic processes, the, all the things that are important to mining, industry, geological knowledge of the planet, and of course particularly our continent. NASA, of course, everybody knows what NASA does. But they have two different histories. NASA was extremely good at telling the public why what it was doing was important, why it was cool, why it would help us understand things, why it would it would increase scientific and technological discoveries, even why it would put people to work and employ them and build the economy, why it would be better than what the Russians were doing, why we had to do this for issues of national security. The U.S. Geological Survey didn't do anything like that, not with nearly as much uh, prestige or effect. And as a result, in the 1990s, when the Republican Revolution swept into Congress with Newt Gingrich, and his colleagues, they took apart many scientific agencies, including the U.S. Geological Survey, which was reduced to a fraction of what it was doing before. But NASA, although it was hit, was still very healthy in comparison. And that's the importance of explaining things to the public. The Republican freshman congressman from Ohio, or Iowa, in the Midwest there, couldn't understand why geology was important. Well, we live in California. I wonder if people understand after Hurricane Katrina why geology is important, why it's important to understand these things. It is important to understand natural gas resources. It is understand, um, important to understand why even if you drill in Alaska, you're not going to get more than 2 or 3 percent of the reserves that you need. So why are we doing this except for political and business reasons? These are things that you have to listen to the scientists about, but the scientists have to advise.